Welcome and God bless you all. I am Rob Langworthy. I am one of the pastors of this church and I am here to do three things. First of all, I am to speak for the whole church in saying how glad we are that you're here. We believe that our mission is to share what we have with the community, to serve the community, and to serve with the community. If you're interested in knowing more about our mission as a church, you can check us out at covenantlb, as in covenantlongbeach.org, covenantlb.org. The second reason I'm here is to make sure that you feel like this is your home for this afternoon, so let me tell you where the restrooms are. They are in the back to your right or to the west as you exit by any of the three exits to the back. And there's also refrigerated water, a refrigerated water fountain for you to avail of as well. Finally, my third job here is to introduce Nelson Dodge, who will in just a minute explain the background of this program and present its musicians. Nelson is the president of Church Keyboard Center, co-sponsor of this event with this particular church, Covenant Presbyterian Church of Long Beach. Of all the things that might be said about Nelson, I feel compelled to tell you that he's really a good guy. For his company lent to this church for five months at no cost to it, the organ on the east side here for the church to have organ music while the organ on the west side up here was undergoing considerable repair work and upgrade work. So, yeah, yeah. So, Nelson, we are very grateful for your kindness and generosity and for your continuing now this introduction to the program. Thank you, Pastor Rob, and thank you all for being here today. This is uh, a little larger crowd than I was expecting, but I'm very pleased. Today's performance is quite unique, but I need to briefly explain the background that I hope will enhance your understanding of what's really going on here. This concert features two organs and two organists. That's special, but not particularly unusual. One organ, the one on your left is the, well, the console on your left, is the Aeolian Skinner pipe organ installed here at Covenant Presbyterian in 1964, and is familiar to most of you, I think. This organ has been featured in countless concerts, and there is even a Hopworks sample set that enables organists to play and experience this organ in their home. The other organ in this performance the console on your right is my Rogers Infinity touring organ that my company Church Keyboard rents out for concerts and other events. Church Keyboard is the representative for Rogers Instruments in Southern and Central California and has installed hundreds of organs in churches and residences. I'm pleased to introduce Trevor Barth, standing over here with the camera, marketing director for Rogers Instruments, who is here today to help document this special event. Please welcome Trevor. <laughs> Instead of pipes that use wind pressure to make musical sound, like the Aeolian Skinner organ, the Infinity organ uses digital recordings of pipes to replicate the sound of actual wind-blown pipes. The sound is heard through the speakers you see behind me. These custom-built speakers, these custom-built speaker towers are designed to navigate through doors. They're much lower when they move in. And then when in position, the speakers elevate up to nine feet as you see them now, so that the sound 
is projected over the head of musicians, orchestras, etc., on stage, sitting in front of those speakers. Many of our rental engagements are with orchestras. This Infinity Organ, which I got in 2022, had its maiden voyage with the Santa Barbara Symphony and organist Cameron Carpenter. In 2023, the Infinity debuted with the San Diego Symphony at the Rady Shell with a second performance at the Tijuana Cultural Center in Mexico. Jaybon Huang, many of you know her, was the organist for those performances. This year in May, the Infinity Organ traveled to Las Vegas for a performance with the Las Vegas Philharmonic featuring organist Paul Jacobs, chair of the Juilliard Organ Department since 2004. It was a spectacular performance and also notable as the last performance for Donato Cabrera, concluding 10 years as music director of the Philharmonic. Every year we provide the touring organ for the Caltech graduation ceremony in Pasadena. This past June was the 50th graduation played by organist and Caltech alum, Dr. Leslie Deutsch. Leslie is here today, please stand up. As Pastor Rob explained, the Infinity Touring Organ filled in last summer while the pipe organ was getting its keyboards rebuilt. Necessary maintenance that needs to be done when a console is over 50 years old. This work was scheduled to take about six weeks, but ended up being five months. We don't typically do rentals longer than a month, but when Peter called me about providing a fill-in organ while the Aeolian Skinner was out of service, which I anticipated would be longer than six weeks, I immediately saw the opportunity for, for what you're going to hear today. It is coincidental that the Aeolian Skinner organ stop list is quite similar to the Infinity organ. And when you know that Roger's tonal philosophy is largely derived from the Aeolian Skinner legacy, it becomes apparent that the Covenant organ is the one organ in Southern California that provides a nearly identical tonal reference for the Infinity Touring organ. My objective last summer was not to just make the Infinity organ sound good. I can accomplish that in two or three hours. The mission here was more challenging. Make the Infinity organ sound as much like the Aeolian Skinner as possible every note of every stop. The process for achieving this is referred to as voicing, which involves adjusting the tonal characteristics of every note of every stop. The voicing parameters on the Infinity organ, which are state-of-the-art technology upgrade that we got in 2016, provide an unprecedented degree of sophistication and nuance that I thought I could achieve that objective. So long story short, I spent about 20 hours over several days comparing every note on the infinity to the corresponding individual pipe in the pipe organ, fine-tuning the digital sound until it matched the pipe as closely as possible. All, 20, all 2,144 notes on the infinity. Which brings me back to why we are here today. A two-organ concert pairing a digital organ with a pipe organ has been done countless times. The goal, of course, is to show that the digital organ can effectively replicate the sound of a pipe organ. The results of these comparisons have been mixed, ranging from respectable to maybe not such a great idea in some cases. This concert today takes the pipes versus digital comparison to a level that may be a first. A digital organ that is a virtual duplicate of the pipe organ it's paired with. In other words, my goal here is not simply that the infinity organ have the sound quality of a pipe organ, but that it actually sounds like this pipe organ. You'll be the judge. That's why we're here today. I just had to share the experience. The repertoire on the program 
includes familiar organ solo repertoire arranged as a duet for two organs. So you'll recognize it, but this will maybe be the first time you're hearing it played across two organs. And repertoire composed for two organs that showcases the tonal colors of each organ. If we've done our job well, the effect will be that of a single organ played by two organists, with the digital and pipe sound melding seamlessly. Throughout the performance, if you find yourself wondering, was that the digital organ or the pipe organ? Then I think we did a good job. So let's get this grand experiment started. Please welcome Peter Bates and David York.
So I'd like to add my welcome this afternoon. Uh, since its installation in 1966, Covenant Aeolian Skinner organ really has had only two masters. My predecessor, Daryl Orwig, who served this church for 29 years, and me, the past 27. Last summer, Nelson Dodge brought his Rogers Turing organ here for several months while our keyboards were being refurbished and upgraded with a new computerized keying system. It was at that time that this program was born. Since David was teaching his organ students here and I was using it for teaching and Sunday services, we agreed to play a two organ program using both instruments while the Rogers was still here. Unfortunately, when the keyboards were returned, the Rogers was needed elsewhere, so this program was postponed. David and I essentially selected the program a year ago and finalized the order within the past few weeks. We've endeavored to select pieces and registrations that colorfully show both organs equally. Michael Burkhart is an educator, clinician, organist, choir director, and composer. Many of us here in Southern California got to know him very well during his early career before every organist had some of his music in their library. When he was college organist at Christ College Irvine, now Concordia University, as a composer, he has written hundreds of compositions for solo organ, organ with other instruments, choirs, children's voices, and handbells, but only one composition written 27 years ago for two organists, the variations on the hymn tune Lob den Herren, commonly known as Praise to the Lord the Almighty. While this piece can be played by two persons at one console, it lends itself well to the use of two completely separate instruments, Daryl Orwig and I played this, uh, performed this piece together during one of his final appearances in recital here as organist emeritus. And David and I played it for Daryl's memorial service in 2009, both times with me playing the second part. But today, with the flexibility of two consoles, I'm playing primo on movements one, three, and five, and David is playing primo on two and four. So you can switch back and forth without jumping off the bench and running around. So here it is, the variations on Loeb den Herren.
Michael McCabe is a composer known to many organists for the clever trumpet tunes that he's written. Born in 1941, he served 20 years in the military, which allowed him the opportunity to study with several well-known organists, uh, such as Leo Sowerby, Dale Wood, and David McKay Williams. McCabe wrote the Petite Suite in 1978 for his friends Olive and Doris to perform on the organ and either the harpsichord or the organ. But today, we're going to play this on two organs. And uh, of the three movements, I particularly enjoy the third movement uh, with its tempo marking of snappy.
Richard Purvis was organist and master of the choristers at Grace Cathedral, and he's the person who wrote Dialogue Monastique based on the plain song chants of the Te Deum and the Dies Irae. In 1965, for organists Earl Ness and William Whitehead, there is a bit of confusion because the published score states that it was recorded by Ness and Whitehead uh, uh, on the record album of their two organ recital, uh, which was both performed and recorded at First Baptist Church in Philadelphia, where Earl Ness was organist, with Whitehead playing a rented electronic organ. However, the record jacket states that the piece was written for the dedication of a second organ at Grace Cathedral. So it's a little bit confusing because the, everything, every other thing says that it was just written for them for that purpose, and the record jacket says it was written for a yet another purpose. We follow the Purvis piece with a fugue by Felix Mendelssohn, one of two that he arranged for organ duet from his Opus 37, Preludes and Fugues.
The prolific composer Charles Callahan passed away just last Christmas Day. 
He wrote over 300 works for the organ, and among them are a surprising number of duets for organ four hands or work for two organs. Born in Massachusetts, Callahan studied at the Curtis Institute in Philadelphia and at Washington University, uh, Catholic, the Catholic University in Washington, D.C. He excelled in many areas within church music field, um, teaching, performing, and composition. In 2014, the American Guild of Organists honored him for his lifelong service in sacred music profession. I found it interesting to learn that as a writer, the subject of two of his books are appropriate to us today, the American Classic Organ and Aeolian Skinner Remembered. The, the American Classic Instrument here at Covenant, as you've heard, was built uh, by Aeolian Skinner in 1966. Rhapsody on American Hymn Tunes was commissioned in uh, 2007 by Marilyn Mason, the great organist, University of Michigan professor and champion of new music. You'll hear arrangements of several familiar hymns throughout. And although he doesn't know it yet, Peter will take the first person to name all six tunes to dinner. <laughs> 